When you see one of these cars in isolation out in the real world, it looks cool. And then you see an auto ID car and you're <laughs> like, I, I realize why you're doing this now. Yeah. <laughs> For me, they've always been the like premium. So the plan is then we're going to get these cars in. Yep. We're going to put them nose to nose and do a comparison as to the take it from me dramatic, dramatic change. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be and then um, yeah, man, let's see what's what. So I've been told it's a bit of a tight squeeze. So I will leave my ride. that to you. I'll yeah. I'll I'll my ride. <laughs> <laughs> Pile on the orange, lovely, isn't it? That yeah. interior, it's so just, nice. I, just something about it. And again, I know it's like a, it's almost a cliche seat now because it's become so yeah. popular. Yeah. But no, I just think it, it transforms the interior, makes it like a special feeling in there. Yeah, you know? honestly, especially against the contrast with the grey, yeah. like it brightens cool. it up, just makes it pop. I know. Doesn't it? The only yeah. thing we sort of tied ourselves into is because we're eventually going to respray the car in a different colour. We're not going to do orange, are we? No. <laughs> yeah, well, you could. You could, but it'd be you got orange bold. wheels, so we need orange to pick brakes. A color that's going to be complementary of the in interior. Whereas yeah. when you order a car with a black interior, you can do it anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You've so, got a lot uh, more freedom with yeah, the colour. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So how's it start? Well, for, how, how did you start? Well, we started kind of like typical sort of startup story. Really, yeah. I was. Um, I was working in London at the time, I used to work in, like, for a media agency, yeah. and I've always loved cars, and I was on forums and whatever else, and the M2 come out, and it didn't have these M style mirrors on it when it come out. I just wanted some kudos, really. I wanted to try and come up with a solution <laughs> to try and fix it. Yeah. I was looking on the internet to see if there was anything that was there, and I, I managed to find a factory that had made a similar sort of product before, but to no avail, and it was on an older generation. I think they'd done it for like the uh, E46 or the E90. I can't remember exactly yes. what it was, but they'd made these caps and no one had really moved on them. And I said, can you do it for this series of car? And they said, we can, but we'll have 1,500 quid, please, um, okay. to make 10 of the units. They'll, they'll keep hold of the mold and gave them 1,500 quid of my hard-earned really? money at the time. We got 10, 10 of those caps, uh, they were delivered, took my mum and dad's bike shed, threw all the bikes out of the bike this shed. This is a proper entrepreneurial yeah. story. I love, yeah. I love uh, this guy already. <laughs> I threw all of the bikes out of the bike shed and used that as a spray booth to spray these Brilliant. Uh, mirror caps. And um, honestly, the finish on them was terrible. It looked like uh, acne, like It looked like someone tingers. had done them in a garden shed. Yeah, yeah. genuinely looked like that. And, Brilliant. You know, to those customers, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, eventually I sold those 10 caps and then the guys at the factory saying, like, if you want to order more, we can do you a better price now. And I said, we, I'd like to do that, but can you paint them? Can you skin them in carbon? And when we started to skin them in carbon with that factory, it sort of it blew changed, up a little bit, changed. yeah. So how did you sell them in those early days? Did you go back on the forum? And Just go, on hey, forums, some, yeah, yeah. On baby, yeah, so it was on Baby BMW at the time, okay. um, which is a, like, enthusiast BMW forum. On the same forum, I bumped into this guy called Joe and he was just getting his M2, which is okay. in April 2016. And Joe at the time is Joe Achilles now. Yeah. And his first video, we're in that video, putting these caps on his car. Yeah. And after that, it was, yeah. that was it then. People were going, do you do other bits? Do you do this, do you do that? Yeah. And obviously I had no idea at that point what we were doing. I just knew that I love cars and I want to keep doing yeah, this, yeah. so we did. And Joe's a brilliant guy as well. Like, He's got so much time. Yeah, he, great, great dude. And if you if you're not familiar with Joe, um, yeah. and, and you're into your BMs, which probably means you're familiar with Joe, yeah. uh, go and search on YouTube Joe Achilles. You can knock yourself out on yeah. as much as much BM content as you possibly yeah. can. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. Beyond. So I mean, he was down recently with his touring as well. Like, so we've still got an amazing relationship. Two years after that happened, we were selling all bits and bobs. We had our own kind of production line at that factory now and it just went from strength to strength. And Fantastic. now we're here sort of stood in this unit sort of Congratulations, four or five mate. years later, yeah. Fantastic. The Adro kit, so we discovered you through Adro. The Adro kit that we were just speaking about, I saw it on, on a car which looked like it was painted like a sort of Porsche olive green. Yeah. I fell in love with it immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's um, stunning. So now here we are with our own kit in yeah. front of us. I mean, we're, we're obviously massively thrilled to have Adjo on board as a partner. Like, obviously, they've, they've gone, they've almost just blown out of nowhere, right. to be honest with you. Like, yeah. They've got massive investment. They've spent so much time and energy. People that actually work for Adjo, mm -hmm. they're former designers at these big OEMs. They okay. work at BMW. They've worked at Hyundai. Like, they've got really, really deep-rooted 
connections within the industry already, which has enabled them to do stuff like this Fantastic. straight away. Companies come on board and it takes them years to be able to develop this level of quality apart. Um, and yeah. they've done it almost overnight. So it, it has a more aggressive aftermarket um, sort of style, yeah. but it doesn't look too far from OEM, no. which is a really tricky balance. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. I mean, there's been a few other companies, tuning companies that have come out and concepted this kind of rejig of the front. Yeah. No one's actually ever gone out and done it, and they've probably not done it as successfully as this, to be honest with you. I think sure. once Adro sort of come out with this, it was kind of a mic drop and all of those companies have gone quiet. Yes. They have, yeah, that's just yeah, the yeah. truth. Yeah. When that kit launched, I was, my inbox was like, boop, boop, yeah, boop, yeah, boop, yeah. I was like, okay. Okay, so in terms of kit then let's run through so we'll start with the biggest one first so this is obviously the front conversion front bumper as i just said it is as close to an oem level of product that you get you've got all of these internal brackets and stuff still that yeah. mount all the headlights on it as, as you'd expect you've got all the grills which are over there the insert here they all follow through to the correct duct in the actual design of the bumper is about 30 or 40 mil extended on the front of the car so the car is physically longer now but like you are, you are okay. adding on a bit of length to the car yeah. but i think in a car like the, the g81 in particular where it's already quite sleek just adding mm. that bit just makes sure. it feel a bit more of like so a streamlined streamlined right? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah definitely brilliant but yeah so really nice conversion kit much more aggressive actually than the original it makes the original bumper look quite flat actually yes um, especially with these streaks here you know so and then all of this links through into carbon cells and carbon rear diffuser yes the carbon quality unreal yeah pre-preg so you can see there you see the strengths so you've got the different yep. types of carbon obviously on the outside this is the aesthetic carbon that you're used to seeing mm -hmm. this is more of the kind of under the hood style mm -hmm. carbon yep. you know when you look in a p1 and then you look down yeah, and yeah. Still, well, that's and it's all like of, that stuff yeah, yeah sort of kind of the wider stuff so yeah these guys have done it properly Very not nice. a lot of people appreciate the level of investment pre-preg takes. Sort of people see pre carbon fiber and they see it, see it as all the same, but. This is real hand laid. Yeah, proper. proper. And the, you're probably looking right. at, um, you know, a mold cost for something like that would be upwards of 50 grand. Yeah. Because of how right complex it, it is. So there's yeah. so much time oh. engineering that goes into just designing these products. Yeah, it's going to tie yeah. in really, really nicely. Looking yeah. forward to it going on. I think what would be great, so you guys can visualize what sort of dramatic change this is. You have a car outside with the, the kit on it. Already. We're yeah. going to get them nose to nose just so you can go, oh, crikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's like, do that now. I'll put the car forward. Okay, so this is, this is about as dramatic a change as I've seen on yeah. this generation of car yeah. so far. When you see these out and about in isolation in the wild, that looks mean. Yeah, yeah. And then I arrived here this morning, I was like, oh, <laughs> looks like a 330D. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is crazy. No, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Genuinely, you so, have. So, um, yeah, what a job. So let's just r run through these changes. We haven't yet seen these parts yet. You've got these much more aggressive streaks. These are actually more like E90 M3 style. I don't mm -hmm. know if, if you could get one of those up, you'll see that that sort of design language comes from that. Right. The grills here, these are more like a M4 GT4 Yes, style, style style of grill that they've added in there. Obviously, you've got all the integrated. I think you guys got Active Cruise as well, so yeah. that's all integrated nicely as well. But yeah, I guess the grill is probably a quite essential element to it, but they've kept it quite clean. It yeah. would have been quite easy to go like an M4 CSL route where it's got all like... Yeah. I think when this generation launched, there was a lot of controversy around the grill, yeah. right? And I think as it happens, it's evolved and people have started to adapt to it. Definitely. But this has done the job. It's yeah, like, 100%. It, it feels like how it should have been. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And that's what so many people say. I think it's because it's just reduced the volume of the grill a little bit. Yes. And it's brought the car forward and it just sort of suits it. I think it's not, where these are quite vertical, yeah. these aren't vertical anymore. They're actually horizontal. And I think that's why it kind of suits, especially yes. with the headlights. It just flows a little bit nicer. We are really fortunate to be going for these headlights, but yes. how have you done this? So the CSL <laughs> uh, modules for here are yes. super easy. I'll see if I can just open the bonnet and show you. Okay. Pretty sure these unbolt. Yes. And you just plug a module in and it changes all of the LED. Because in there you would be forgiven here. for thinking it's a new headlamp. You think, yeah, 100%. You? Right? It totally transforms 100%. it. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally so, with transforms. the existing lamp, you plug in a new module and it changes the colour of the, Correct. the lamp. Correct. Yeah, it's simple as that. And you know that's what they're doing at the factory. No, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it, sounds, it sounds so silly, but it's literally, literally as easy that. as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transformative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes about, I think, 15 minutes. So 
a side skirt's actually an extension of exactly. the existing one. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. That. So they just literally add straight on. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, we've got the carbon on the tops of the wing mirror caps. It yep. all sort of links in then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All coming together. I've just and spotted this, this parking camera. Just come and see this a second. You wouldn't believe this. So the other day I'm parking the car and I'm like, there must be a bug on the camera. The only stone impact that we currently have on the front of this car. It's a bullseye. It is, it is, it is a bullseye, yeah. It's a full on. I mean, look at it. So maybe we'll get a camera down to you. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually, we it's, probably a good it time, it's probably a good time to do it. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's going to be a bit more difficult to hold on. Uh, I mean, obviously the main part of the diffuser got more depth, but I really love that it extends right around here. And it carries on. Like it's got that, it's that continuity from the side yes. skirt as well. Yeah. Cause it's got the same design language where they're sort of downward facing. Yeah. They're very right, well. There you go. We've got ourselves a model. We've got a model. <laughs> no, they're really cool. Yeah, thanks, man. We, we were actually just talking off camera about all of the stuff we don't speak about because internally you think it's really boring. Yeah. The engineering that these guys put into their own kits and their own work is super extensive and I'm, I'm persuading them to put out some content. No, it. yeah, it was. Because it, it really sets context and I think when you understand just how much effort and engineering and time goes into a component that might be a bracket that's boring. Yeah. And when you add that up as the some of its parts, it just adds value as to what you're doing here. We were obviously talking more in detail about the, the new M2 and the kit that we've done there. And I think you're right, we definitely need to probably talk yeah. a bit more about that. Like that, that kit has been probably 150, 200 hours worth of work yep. outside of running the business and <laughs> sure. doing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not fortunate enough at the moment to have like an engineering team in-house in this office. Uh -huh. So we've had to work remotely with someone that's further up north. All of that stuff, like you say, takes it's, time, it's energy. It's the boring stuff that makes it work, yeah. which is often the, the amount, most amount of time and, and, yeah, and yeah. pain. So We're basically <laughs> running out of space because it's, yeah, up, I was apologizing to James when he turned up because he's a bit of a <laughs> tall, for not one, of a, for one of a better word. And, <laughs> and it's hard. because we're just, we've just been massively growing. Like month for month, we're going from bigger, best month to best month to best month, which is amazing, especially it's in this climate. It's a good problem climate. to have. Yeah, it's, it's a, a problem great problem to have, but you feel very privileged that <laughs> obviously given everything that's going on in the world at the minute where yeah. everyone's inflation, all that sort of stuff, to still be growing is amazing. When you guys turn up, I don't want to show you the stock room because it is a nightmare. Like I can barely move in there at the minute. What Jack's so. saying is he's got so many orders. <laughs> There's so much new stuff yeah. that he doesn't want to show us his yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. Show, uh, uh, storeroom. So, but anyway. I, I, can, I can show you, it's fine. <laughs> cool. Don't worry. Uh, Come on, let's go and see this, this, this over, over <laughs> yeah. Yeah. storeroom. It looks good, it's mate. It's it tidy. Good. This is Thomas. How are you doing, Thomas? <laughs> How's things, mate? You okay? Good to meet you. How's things? One of the things that people don't know about us is they think we're a UK company, mm -hmm. but actually, 60% of our business is outside the UK. We have this area, we have all of this stuff going on here. It's a very small part of what we do. Right, I'm really, um, so, really great to see you. Yeah, well yeah, done, thank it's fantastic, you. mate. So um, this time next year, we're gonna be in a, in a new unit. 100%, uh, nice. yeah, 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 no, it's, yeah. There's some more Adro stuff just turned Brilliant. up. It's going out. Yeah, so these come from the guys over in South Korea. It's always fun when they turn up. Amazing. Because yeah. they come up with the biggest boxes. So. <laughs> Massive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you wouldn't actually expect it, but this is a, just a one series gloss back rear spoiler. And I yeah. would say genuinely we sell like 15 of them a day. They are like, yeah, a day? Yeah, yeah they, are, they sell like hotcakes. We can't restock them fast enough. Isn't it's, that amazing? So all of these are we gone to? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spoilers and stuff, things like that, they sell and move so fast because they're just such an easy mod for people to make at home. The Adro stuff is a bit different. You can't really do sure, that all the time. Yes. But, um, extensive kit unless someone's got a spare paint shop in their house <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. The, the spoilers and stuff are really popular and that makes up a big portion of our business so. right just before we get into these and i'm not just saying this because we're filming this is genuine so when i was sort of learning to drive and i had a mini and i was putting bits and parts on it i just always aspired to a set of hres <laughs> i just always did and they were so expensive yeah, right? yeah, yeah. and uh this is god what are we now i don't know 17 years on from from then so this is finally my first set of HRs. Is it really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, they've always been the like premium wheel. 100%, yeah. And uh, yeah, to be able to fit a set is actually like a bit of a little, what we're going to do is a typical YouTube thing. And we're not going to show you these until we unveil the car when we come back to Auto ID once they've done the work. Because I think it will set context greater as a sum of its parts 100%. rather than giving it all away. But. Sexy <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's tuning in who didn't see it, parked this car in an NCP underground car park in Finsbury Square. Pretty nice place though. Uh, you'd think so. I was late to be on stage for something, right? And I've got bags in the back of the car for two weeks worth of travel. And I had to walk a little bit across town to get to this gig. And I was just like, oh, I'm late. 
Flambador left. This had the sheet over it. Speaking to the police afterwards, they were like, the irony of it is the fact that the sheet was over was an opportunist's idea of saying it's something's being yeah, hidden. hidden yeah. I came back and this was smashed in because this is a split tail. The glass is bonded to that catch. Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing, all of this was, was up like that. They'd taken all of the gear out of this space. They didn't lift the boot. The glass though, mate, it must have a lot of tension in it. When they shattered it, considering it's the back window, the glass was on the front of the dash. In That's the front. crazy. Glass went throughout the whole car. Passport was the biggest pain by far and away. The HSBC commercial chip to get into your bank. Oh, uh, yeah. On the road for two weeks, try and get one yeah, of those. Yeah. Like, just, just small things. Bits back now and we're going to make it better. We are, yeah, this is the ultimate <laughs> yeah, comeback. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, that's it. And I won't, be, I won't be bringing it into London anytime soon no, or leaving not. any bags in it. That, that part of it, to be fair, was probably my fault, but mm. we're going to auto idea it and come back full send. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Just gonna wind Joe up a little bit. Joe Achilles came down here and he set the fastest lap time on the sim. I'm just gonna send him a picture of totally fake faster lap time, just to wind up. Just, just like a, a tenth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just a tenth. Oh, there you go. Joe. Oh, oh, sorry, mate. Well, what did I say? Oh, not a bad lap, that. You've Joe. done really well, yeah, there, mate. Nice effort. Nice effort, nice effort James. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> just wanted to tell you uh, that that was fake and I was just winding you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, the time was even, like, the timing difference was so, like, believable, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to message Jack and say, right, I'm coming back to <laughs> You're about to see why Kai gets paid the big bucks, mate. This is a difficult job, this. It's a satisfactorily flush fit, isn't it? That's so it. it goes straight, straight that, in. That's, that's where the money goes, genuinely, yeah. like getting it as flush as that. Tolerances are spot on, aren't they? We've installed our fair share of diffusers and things like that. and the, They don't all do that, they? Do don't they? all do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very, very good product. Definitely. So now obviously just going to nut and bolt a few of these in. Um, here you've got push rivets that all secure in place. You've also got some free m tape as well. Mm -hmm. But these two are going to be push rivets. Yep. And then here we're going to nut and bolt just to make sure that you don't have really? any pesky really critters nice. coming. I'm impressed with, with the fit. Yeah. Really good. Oh man, it's so <laughs> cool. It's really nice. Super flush as well. Wow. Sculpture on it's just spot on. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. That looks so good. Badass piece of kit. Look at it. It's evil now. I love this double step here now. That's really, really nice. Look at the skirt. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Now the front does look like a bit of a bald chicken at the front. <laughs> it does. The front looks so normal all of a sudden. Yeah, it does. This was dropped 40 mil. This is 40 mil, yeah. It's 45. a bit too much, right? Yeah, that's a bit too much. I think it'd be nice to have a, a conversation around maybe a 20 mil. I think maybe. I think we look at that what definitely. Do you think? Yeah, once the wheels are on, yes. we'll have a look at if the fitment's perfect. And yeah. if it's not, maybe just put like a little five mil spacer on, something sure. like that, just to get the fitment just right. Okay. The way the rear wheels sit in the arch is perfect. Yeah. For some reason, the front's got like, it looks like the axle lifts yeah. up or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's looks oh, like that. It? It's squashed yeah. in. The sort of profile of arch to wheel is spot on on the rear. But if you look at the front, the gap is huge. Full yeah, fist. it's a bit of an odd one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's like, in, well, certainly aesthetically imbalanced. I'm sure BMW have a, have a reason for it. We're probably going to ruin uh, several million dollars of R&D. Well, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's because it's, obviously it's a staggered fitment. Right. So you've got 19s on the front, 20s on the rear. That's the same across the board. But weirdly, the G, G82, uh -huh. on the G80s, the M3s and the G81 M3 Tourings, they only need the fronts lowered. But on the G82, for some reason, right, right. both need changing really? because the, okay. the rear is high as well. So it doesn't really make sense, but I would have presumed that it's something to do with the staggered fitment, but yeah. you know, we'll never know. Have you had any experience mounting roof boxes on these? On this, no, not no. yet. I think if we were to do it, it would be a first. And I genuinely think 
it would look insane. We're, we're really thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Really, really thinking about it. Like it does support us a lot. You know, it's dragging camera gear around it. What I think would look good if you were to colour match it. Yeah. And they had like a Carl Army Orange pinstripe along. Now we're talking. That would look good. Now we are talking. Tie in the interior to the exterior. That would look quite nice. That would look cool, wouldn't it? It follows the um, profile true. of the car as well. Yeah. Quite nicely, so it sort of dips down at the front. We do have a customer of an RS6 that has had one of them, and yeah. he, he did do 190 mile an hour, and it stayed on. If you do want to do Sounds some like testing, a, there's a video in that. Are <laughs> roof boxes allowed around the Nurburgring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are just at the moment putting the uh, exhaust finishes off the exhaust tips. Now these are the titanium tips and we've gone down the size because this Adro diffuser actually sits a bit tighter. Um, but not only that, it sort of sits a bit further back. So this, as it stands, this left tip here is how it should be, flush with the diffuser. Um, that's, that's how the stock exhaust was and that's how these tips need to be with this system. But what you can see is you can't actually really see the system when they're there and we think it'd be a little bit better that the tips maybe stick out a bit more so that they're more in line with the design of the actual diffuser as well so what we're going to try and fabricate instead which can see our issue here when they're like that this you see the exhaust here so you can't you can't leave a tip like that so we're going to try and fabricate something or try and move the exhaust back to some degree just so we can get that little bit of poke on the system uh, on the on the tips so they look a little bit more in keeping with the design of the diffuser. So the car's gonna have a go at that now, we don't know how we get on. So uh, it's after hours and we've got Jarve down from Ghost Wraps as well. He's come down because we spoke about earlier in the video about having these bits done in the gloss black to match the trim and sit in a similar way to how the bumper is on Nathan's uh, M4. So that's what he's going to be doing. He's going to be making these bits gloss black and that's then going to tie in nicely uh, with this trim here that's already been painted gloss black. So yeah, let's see how it goes. So this is what it looked like before and now first side is done and I think you'll agree even just seeing it here looks a lot better straight away. So yeah now crack on and magic the next one. Cool so we're pretty much at the end of the day we've got to hop on a plane to go and film some cars somewhere and then we're going to nice. come back uh, next week where we're going to unveil the completed car with wheels, headlights, bumpers, skirts, the lot and um, Go for a drive. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm really awesome, excited man. to see this finished. Yeah. So, like you say, world first. So, yeah, that's it. World first Adro go. kit on the touring, which is yeah. which is exciting. And then we need to come up with the new paint job for it, which will be a I'm excited itself. to see or that. Maybe a roof box. Yes. Let's see. But mate, today's been amazing. No, Thank you so much. Pleasure. Man. It's, no, been, it's been, been really, really cool. Yeah. Look forward to coming back soon. <laughs>